Hello and welcome to this video and to my first book haul of the year. So uh, if you saw my June book review you'll know I'm in the same outfit. I've literally just pressed stop on that one and start on this one. So it's the 30th of June. We are officially six months through the year so I thought I would share with you the books that I have collected this year. I think there's only a few that you've seen. Most of them, to be fair, I've bought in June because I've tried to not buy quite as much uh, book-wise, although I have gone a bit mental in June, knowing that I was going to go a bit mental in June so that I can get through some of the stuff that I already had. So you'll see that my TBL shelf has been a bit decimated because there's about 25, 26 books here that I'm going to show you. So I think first I'll go through the ones that you probably have seen already in uh, different vlogs or different uh, videos. Like I think a couple of these might have been on my TBR shelf run through. So we'll just go through these quickly. Um, just in case you, you're new here and you wanted to see what I've been collecting over the past six months. Um, so the first one is The Christmas Murder Game by Alexandra Benedict. This is a thriller that my husband Pete bought when we went on our honeymoon. Uh, he read it then. I've now got it and I'm saving it for December. The little tagline, 12 clues, 12 keys, 12 days of Christmas, but who will survive until 12th night? So that will be one of my little December reads. Probably my only festive December read, to be honest, this year. Also on our honeymoon I picked this book up which is The Christie Affair by Nina de Gramont I'm going with. Uh, this was on one of the free bookshelves that were in one of the hotels that we were staying in. Uh, this is following the real life, it's a novel but it's based on when Agatha Christie uh, goes missing after her husband has an affair I believe. I thought it sounded interesting. It's a bit out of my normal comfort zone, um, which is why I haven't picked it up yet, that and I'm going trying to get through my birthday and Christmas gifts. Um, so one day I'll get to this and we'll see what it's like. The pages are falling out though, so it's unlikely that I'm going to be keeping it afterwards. And then when I went to London to see Newsies and Bake Off, I picked up Black Buck on the free shelf at my brother's tube station. I've heard not a lot about this, but what I have heard is it's sort of novel meets self-help and we're following a guy called Buck as he makes his way from like the bottom of the tower block at like the coffee shop to the top where all the big wigs sit. I think it's going to be an interesting concept again not totally my uh, normal genre but looking forward to giving that one a go. One that came from my mum. I did get another one but I've already read that one and it's actually right here. So the other one she gave me was A Vintage Friendship by Kathy Hopkins which I have already read and there is a video with my full thoughts on that one. Um, as it's on this shelf it means it's leaving. Uh, but the other one was Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens. I don't think I need to go into what this one's about. Um, it's, it's a very good film so because I've fairly recently watched the film I'm trying to leave this one for a little bit longer just so that I don't fully, fully remember everything that's going on in the story. But I am quite looking forward to reading the book because I did enjoy that film. The last book that you may have seen in videos previously is Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Garmus. Uh, I bought this one in Costco when we did our Costco haul. And yeah, it's a very popular, popular book, uh, which is based on a character called Elizabeth Zott who is a chemist but obviously we're in the 1960s so she's not allowed to really be a scientist so she starts a baking show or a cooking show I think and then tries to make it more scientific. I've heard very good things about this book but I've also heard that the cover's a little bit deceiving and it's darker than it looks like it is on the front but I'm looking forward to getting to this one eventually. And I will probably say that about all of the books but oh, there we go. The only book I've actually bought in a charity shop this year is Orgy and Me, Three Wonder Stories by R.J. Palacio. Uh, I read Wonder, it's useful sitting here, so I read Wonder last year and really really enjoyed it. Um, so when I saw this for 75p in a charity shop I thought I'd pick it up because I enjoyed the story, the first story a lot um, and 
if we're staying in the same kind of world and it's the same kind of writing I think I'll enjoy this one as well. Now we get into phase I've gone a bit mental uh, on buying books in June slash end of May. Um, so we'll start with the ones that I bought in the supermarket. I think it was Sainsbury's. I can't remember which one. Uh, but I bought The No Show by Beth O'Leary. I have read every Beth O'Leary book so far. This is the only one. I think she's got a new one out anyway. But I buy them in paperback. Um, so this is the only one in paperback that I haven't read yet. The flat share and the switch are my favourite. I wasn't too keen on the road trip. But this one sounds very interesting because it's about three women who were supposed to go on a date with the same man. But he doesn't turn up to any of the dates. And that's all I really know. Because he's... It just says here, three women, three dates, one missing man. So I'm looking forward to going into that. I do really enjoy Beth O'Leary's writing. Um, so that should be a good time. The next one I picked up was Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I have read Evelyn Hugo and Daisy Jones and the Six. The latter being my favourite, which is unusual. I think most people prefer Evelyn Hugo. But this one, we're following... The, it's a party, three three siblings or something, and it gets out of control. I like Taylor Jenkins Reid's writing style again, and would like to read everything that she's written. This one probably wouldn't have been as high up on my want to read list if I didn't really want to read Carrie Soto, which is the tennis-based one, and I believe she appears in this book first. So I kind of want to read this one first before going into that one. I don't think you have to, but that's what I want to do. And as I said, I really want to read all of Taylor Jenkins Reid's work. So when I saw this for cheap in the supermarket, I decided to pick it up. And lastly, from that supermarket trip is Together Again by Millie Johnson. If you're new to my channel, you probably don't know about my slight obsession with this woman. Um, again, I think I've read every book that she's ever written. Um, and it's like a warm hug whenever I do read one of her books. She is very much a, well, in the old days they would have called it chiclet. Um, she's very much one of those kind of authors, think you're marrying keys and that kind of stuff. And uh, supermarkets seem to be the only place you can ever pick up the new ones. So I was very, very glad to see that in there as well. Let's go on to Waterstones. So if you saw Long Sunday, my Winnie the Pooh video, then you will have known I left you on a cliffhanger about what I bought on that shopping trip. Um, so I came away in the end with five books. Um, so I had to put a little bit of money towards my gift card, but that wasn't a problem at all. Uh, the first one I actually found for a pound in the, the sale box, and that is The First Thing About You by Chaz Hayden. Um, if I sounded like I didn't know what I was talking about, it's because it's quite difficult to read the title of this book because of all the, the dots. And this is a, I'm going to assume YA, but I'm not entirely sure. So this one is, when new boy Harris meets cute girl in his class, Nori, he's determined to prove he is more than just the kid in the powered wheelchair. Luckily he has a secret weapon, his nurse Miranda. Beautiful and confident Miranda sees Harris for who he really is. Funny, smart and totally worthy of Nori's affections. It seems everything is working out for Harris for once. But Miranda has her own demons and Harris starts to wonder if she has his best interests at heart. So I read that and it sounded very interested. I did then look it up on Storygraph and although there's not many reviews, uh, they were all pretty good. So I thought for a pound, I'm going to give it a go. I then did the buy one get one half price um, so I did I ended up with four books in that so I got The Bullet That Missed by Richard Osman this is the third one in the Thursday Murder Club series you'll know if you've watched my June book a review that I'm currently in the middle of the second one as I'm filming this um, so I haven't even looked at the back of that um, it's got some lovely sprayed edges um, even though neither of my other two do but that would be nice um, and yeah, looking forward to carrying on with that series. Uh, so with that, I then got This Time Tomorrow by Emma Straub, I think. This is a time travel book, which again, unlike my normal my normal genre, I thought I would try some new things. Um, so this is following Alice, who is about to turn 40. 
she feels a bit stuck. But after one too many drinks, she wakes up in her childhood home to find 40-year-old Leonard, who is her dad, who is sadly dying, uh, celebrating her 16th birthday. And then she relives that day to see how any changes could impact the rest of her life. I thought it sounded interesting. And I have heard a couple of people talk about this one and, and they have enjoyed it. Although time travel is not something I have read a lot about, but then I did also get Love Struck by Laura Jane Williams, who is the author of Our Stop and Love Square, and I think some others that I haven't read. And this is a similar thing, sort of a sliding doors also. Really pretty sprayed edges. Um, so this is following Becca Calloway. Uh, she's ready for Mr. Wright. Uh, she even goes as far to hold a manifestation ceremony to find him. And when she receives a te text from her ex five minutes later, she knows it is, it's a sign. The problem is she doesn't know which way it's pointing. Should Becca re reply and reignite things with her old flame mic? Or delete and block moving forward with the new man in her life? Becca has one choice with two ways this could go. In Love Struck, you're going to see them both. So again, I've enjoyed Laura Jane Williams writing in the past, and I thought that sounded like an interesting concept where we're going to see both outcomes of her sort of sliding doors moment. Um, so should be fun. Plus, pretty cover, pretty sprayed edges. Um, and the one I got in the half price with that book was I Kissed Shara Wheeler by Casey McQuiston. This is a YA. Um, Shara Wheeler kisses like three people and then disappears um, so they're trying to find out where she's gone. Um, so again, something fun to dig into. And then if I can lift this up. This is my works order from the month. Um, and if you can hear any noise that's Jeff, he's just turned up. He's now going to dig around the duvet and make lots of noise. So yeah, I went a bit ham in the works and ended up with a lot of books because there was a sale and a lot of them were going a lot cheaper than I'd seen them anywhere else. So yeah, got a bit overexcited, didn't I? Uh, but as I said, I'd allowed myself time in June to buy books. So from there, I have bought The Kiss Curse by Erin Sterling. I read The X Hex last Halloween and enjoyed that and this is following the cousin I think in that story so excited to read a sort of companion to that um, rather than a straight up series. I got Walking on Sunshine by Giovanna, Giovanna Fletcher. Um, this is following three friends, uh, Mike, Vicky and Zaza who go on a trek after losing their friend Pia to breast cancer. Again, I've read a few of uh, Giovanna's books, have enjoyed them. This was like £2.50, so I thought I would give it a go. If you saw my, I think it was May, you will know that I absolutely fell in love with the love hypothesis. So when I saw Love on the Brain for £3 in the works, I was like, I have to get that one. So this is another STEM romance from Ali Hazelwood. I think we're around NASA for this one so I'm excited to give another one a go to see if I enjoy it as much as The Love Hypothesis because currently that is my favourite book of the year. Bit of a theme, I've got another Taylor Jenkins read I got After I Do. Um, again this was about £3. This is following Lauren and Ryan who met and fell in love in college, they got married but now they're reaching breaking point so they decide to live apart for a year without any contact just to see how that goes um, I thought it could be interesting I think this is probably an older Taylor Jenkins read so yeah first published in 2014 so interested to give sort of a backlist to Taylor Jenkins read a go one that doesn't really fit with the other ones but again I saw it going cheap and that is the Parenting Hell book by Rob Beckett and Josh Widdicombe. This is actually one of my favourite podcasts so I have wanted to read the book but didn't want to spend lots of money on it so when I saw it in the works I thought yes I'm gonna have to speed up because my camera battery might be going again 
but The Dead Romantics by Ashley Poston had so many good things about it and it's a romance with a ghost so I'm very very intrigued and looking forward to giving that one a go. Hook, Line and Sinker was basically the only book I was going there for because for Christmas, uh, I think it was Father Christmas or my mum, I can't remember which one, uh, bought me It Happened One Summer but I'd already got it and already read it so my mum gave me some money to get the sequel instead so I got Hook, Line and Sinker. Uh, I'm expecting it to be smutty but also entertaining as we're following I think it's Piper's sister as she dates the best friend of the guy in It Happened One Summer so that could be fun. And then lastly I got the selection series by Kira Cass. I've read the first two previously, really enjoyed them, always wanted them in a physical copy and to continue the series. So again, had to pick those up in my little haul. Uh, so there you go. There are the 20 something odd books that I have bought since January this year, or acquired, should we say, because not all of them I've paid for. Yeah, it sounds like I've stolen them, I haven't. You know, they've come from free shelves or my mum or something so acquired but yeah uh rambling uh so yeah there, there are all the books are there any that you think i should be prioritizing any that should be bumped up my uh tbr and read sooner rather than later let me know in the comments or if you've hated any of these books also let me know because i'd be interested in hearing that as well um and if you've enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up if you haven't already please go ahead and subscribe and i will see you in the next one Bye.